Right now, the U.S. Supreme Court is protected by barricades after protesters gathered overnight in reaction to a draft opinion obtained by Politico indicating that the court has voted to overturn Roe v. Wade. So Politico describes it as a, quote, full-throated, unflinching repudiation of the 1973 decision which guaranteed federal constitutional protections of abortion rights. They say the draft was written in February by Justice Samuel Alito and that the four other Republican-appointed justices still side with him. As of this week, the three Democratic-appointed justices are reportedly working on a dissent. And as for Justice Roberts, CNN is reporting this morning that he does not want to completely overturn Roe v. Wade, but is willing to uphold the Mississippi law that would ban abortion at 15 weeks. Uh, it is important to note, though, that none of this is official right now. Justices have changed their stance in the past as draft opinions circulate, and nothing will be final until the draft is actually published, which probably won't be for another couple of months. That said, activists on both sides of the aisle are already calculating what could happen next in each state if they gain the ability to decide on abortion for themselves. So taking a look, uh, this is a map from Vox. This is as of last month. 22 states had abortion bans in the works. Those in blue are early term bans after six or eight weeks of pregnancy. Uh, those in orange and red, those are near total bans, which would still allow abortions in certain cases, and that includes our neighbor, Idaho. So joining us now with more on the impact for our state and uh, more reaction, Fox 13's John Hopper's dad. John, good morning. Good morning, guys. Activists are expecting an influx of patients to Washington from Idaho if Roe versus Wade is overturned. Our neighboring state has already passed a copycat abortion ban based on the recently passed Texas law that bans abortions after six weeks of pregnancy. The state Supreme Court temporarily blocked it after Planned Parenthood filed a lawsuit, but Planned Parenthood is apparently already renting medical office space on the Oregon-Idaho border. Oregon Public Broadcasting reports the agency is preparing for an influx of out-of-state patients seeking abortions. And the Vice President of Public Affairs for Planned Parenthood of Greater Washington and Idaho recently told the Spokesman Review health centers in our state could see a 385% increase in people seeking abortions if Roe versus Wade is overturned. And advocates in our state on both sides of this issue reacting to this news this morning. It hadn't occurred to me that we would also need to continue to so vehemently fight for the right to choose what we do with our bodies. And in recent years, and certainly in the last few months, it has become clear to me that this is truly a fight for those most basic rights. Good news and bad news. Uh, good news, because we've all been praying that a good decision would come down from the Supreme Court. Bad news that this unprecedented leaking of information from the Supreme Court staff or even a judge is literally said a dark message to America about, you know, there is no limits to breaking norms and, and, and principles and processes in our government. Meanwhile, state leaders are reacting this morning. Governor Jay Inslee tweeting in all caps, not here, not in our lifetime. Washington is and will remain pro-choice and we will not slow down in the fight to ensure safe, affordable access to every person who needs it. And U.S. Representative Pramila Jayapal saying she is outraged and disgusted by the reported draft. Jai Paul describes herself as one of the one in four women in this country who have chosen to have an abortion. Seattle City Council member Shauna Sawant is also set to hold a rally today to defend Roe v. Wade. That's set for tonight, 6 p.m. at Westlake Park. Guys.